Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing this Mazda Miata that has an automatic, and we're going to find out if the automatic transmission is complete blasphemy. Before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to the Orem Mazda here in Orem, Utah for giving me some time with this Miata. This particular one, finished in Zircon Sand, is available for sale, so if you're interested, link to their website in the description down below, link to my car brand guide as well. Let's get into it. Under the hood, we have a two liter four cylinder that goes through a six speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy is 26 around town and then 35 on the highway with power outputs being 181 horsepower and then 151 pound feet of torque. Before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you want to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. Now this particular Miata is finished in Zircon Sand. I think this is my favorite color on the Miata. They also have that cool gray color that's new for 24, which also looks good. But anyways, new headlight design. It's a little bit sharper. I like how this is all blacked out at the bottom. But yeah, the Miata, I think it's a cool looking car. I've always been a fan of the style. Now our turn wheel setup is 205 by 45 by 17 in the front and over in the rear. And you can see here with the wheels, you've got the silver mixed with the blacked out trim on this one. Like a little turn signal indicator there on the side. And then notice the mirror cap is body painted. And then this one's the RF. So the whole roof is painted. Got that cool fastback design. Best looking Miata out there. Now this of course comes with Mazda's normal key fob. We've got the lock and unlock function opening for the trunk, pretty straightforward, pop it open. And popping into the rear, you can see the storage space back here. Not massive, obviously, but it's a very, very small car. So it just makes sense. And plop. I like that we've got that antenna, but then we also have another antenna there off the side. Got the new taillight design, which Again, they've kind of upgraded these just to look a little bit more modern. I think it's a sharp look. And then you got the exhaust tips there at the very bottom. And overall, good looking car. Now, this is one of the coolest things about Miatas is they bring the exterior color inside a little bit. You can see all the nice stitching and everything that comes with this grand touring package. And then you've got the window controls there with the mirror adjustments. Blind spot running with the mirrors, by the way. And then here are the seats. All that nice stitching down the center, manual adjustments. And then you guys can see here with the stability control and then some of the safety tech as well. And then womp womp, two pedal layout. And. Ooh. Now take a look at the steering wheel. You've got nice trim all around. Paddle shifters there on the back because automatic life. Got stuff like our cruise control here, volume controls, all of that, and then traditional stocks here on the back. Now here's a quick look at the gauge cluster. We do have the info tab there on the side, which is pretty fun. It shows you different bits of information on it. And then I like how you've got the RPMs front and center. That's a really cool part of this. Just a regular backup camera in reverse. And then, yeah, this has Mazda's new infotainment system, which means it's not a touchscreen. Everything's controlled via a dial but you can do android auto apple carplay which makes it a touch screen single zone climate with this and then you do have heated seats and then see the nice trim there then of course got the automatic shifter as well and then this is cool with the sport mode little kind of dial there got a regular brake control c infotainment system and then this is kind of like a little bit of storage cup holders back here and then we got more storage in the back and RF, so you can see here for opening and closing, so we'll just press this quickly. It's pretty quick. You can see the mechanism there in the back. And bada bing, bada boom. Takes a minute, but yeah, not too bad. So here's our one sticker for this RF Grand Touring, again in Zircon Sand. Total MSRP is just under 40,000 with this build. And then here's what it looks like with the top down. Again, really cool design. And I like how you can have, you know, the top down fun and have it still a little bit more of a closed in cabin compared to the soft top and plus re less road noise in general. Apparently I can't talk, but let's drive it. Well, a uh, little disclaimer here. Whenever I review uh, Miatas, it's always kind of hard to get the GoPro view super good because it's just a small interior, but we'll set up set off regardless. 
Automatic Miata. <laughs> potential, potential blasphemy. We'll find out. I will say the, uh, not that old, 26. But still, the older I get, the more I like the Miata. Because these cars are, you know, not cheap by any means. You know, 40 grand is a lot of money. But more affordable than a lot of other sports cars. They're really inexpensive to maintain and they're really reliable. And it's like, becomes more appealing. Um, I don't own any sports cars currently. I don't have any plans of owning any. But what I will say is if I did buy one, I don't know, I think the Miata would definitely be on a short list for me. It's just such a cool car. The steering's great. Um, and with this RF, I've got the windows up. I got like the winds blowing through my hair, but then it's not, you know, frustratingly loud. Uh, and you know, you can do windows up in the soft top that helps a little bit, but just having that little area behind that's open, I know, I think it makes a pretty substantial difference, if you ask me. Now this automatic, it's not bad, but yeah, the Miata is much better with the manual, right? We all know that. We all know that. This is a transmission that exists in this car simply because some people don't know how to drive manual. Not because it's as good or better than the automatic, or the manual, sorry. But simply because people, it's like if you, and the same thing with the Toyota 86, right? And the Super BOZ. It's like, oh, you can't drive manual? Well, here's a transmission that is not gonna be as fun in this car, but that's the price you pay when you can't kick it with three pedals. So it's kind of a, yeah, kind of a thing with this. Gosh, so much fun. The Miata is such a good car because you can have fun at low speeds. You don't need to be driving incredibly fast for this to be fun. Like the body roll it has and everything else. It's so good, it's so good. I love it. Um, so yeah, RF, pretty cool. Let's actually close the roof here. We should technically be able to do it while from my understanding, you can go up to like maybe five miles an hour with the RF. Look how fast that is. Operation complete. Like boom, that's so cool. And now I'm in a coupe, basically. This is, I, I love this, I love the RF package. You know, I know some people are hardcore soft top fans because it is lighter, but I've had some people say that you can feel the difference and I've driven soft top and the RF and slightly, but it's not like, this doesn't annoy me at all. Maybe some, you know, hardcore purists, it might annoy them having the extra weight up top and all that. But for me, it's like, it's still a lightweight, tossable, fun car. And it makes this way more livable. Like the soft top, I don't think I'd want to daily drive that. This on the other hand, it's it's definitely in that category where you could daily drive it. You could definitely daily drive it. So let me guys think about the automatic and about the RF, but I think manual RF is the way to go. But if you can't drive a manual, you know, obviously the automatic is, it's a nice thing to, it's a nice thing to have. 